So the next component of VPC is NAT gateway. So when we talk about NAT gateway, if our private subnet wants to send the traffic, okay, suppose there are instances inside of the private subnet and these instances wants to download some software upgrades or, you know, any kind of upgrades from the internet. So how to do that? Because into the private root table, we do not have this particular entry, which uh, routes our traffic to the internet gateway. If we put this entry into the private root table, then it will no longer stay private, right? So what to do for that? So if we want our traffic from the private instances to go to the internet, then we have to use something called as NAT gateway. So NAT gateways are always deployed in public And as the name is NAT, NAT means network address translation. So it will do the network address translation and it will also provide us with the target in our root tables. I don't have much space over here, but let us say that I have this NAT gateway into the subnet 2. So this is my NAT gateway inside of the subnet 2, which is a public subnet. It is always deployed in public subnet. Remember that. So whatever traffic is being generated by my EC2 instance in the private subnet would be going to NAT gateway. So if I have any traffic that I want to go to internet, then the target would be NAT. From the NAT, this would be going to the internet gateway and it would be going to the public internet. So this was the concept about NAT. The next thing that we need to understand over here is something about security. Okay, so we are going to discuss two topics over here. The first topic is NACL and another topic is security. You would be understanding security group better when we go to the fourth module that is of compute. So when we talk about NACL, it stands for Network Access Control List. And this NACL is Nothing but a fire. Security group also is a fire code. So what is the difference between two? First of all, firewall means it is used to filter out the traffic that is coming in or going out. Right? So we want, if we want to filter out our traffic, then we can use the firewalls. We do also have firewalls installed in our laptops or computers. Correct. Same thing applies over here as well. But NACL is a firewall on subnet level. And security group is the firewall on instance level. That is on EC2 instance level we can decide that which traffic should go to a particular EC2 instance and which cannot. NACL will decide that which traffic is allowed inside of a subnet and which is not. Okay. So these are the two things that you need to remember. Into NACLs, we can have allow or deny rules. So you can either allow the traffic or deny the traffic. For security groups, we only have allow rules. Here you can deny any traffic. If there is no allow rule for any traffic, it is by default denied. Okay. Then in the NACLs, we have ordered rules. And lowest number would be having highest priority. Lowest number rule would be having highest priority and the rules are evaluated in order. Here, rules are evaluated all together. So, no order rules are there.
right so this is all for you know the knackers the security groups that we discussed and the last thing which is remaining is napkins are stateless okay so what is stateless they do not remember the traffic which is coming in so if even the traffic is going out then it should be having some kind of rule for it okay it will not remember if i'm going inside of the door watchman some watchman might remember me some may not okay so the watchman who do not remember are knackers so that is stateless and the security groups are stateful they do remember their traffic which is coming in and going so this was about knackle and security group now i'll be taking you to the portal for showing you the demonstration of vpc subnets internet gateway and the route table the demonstration of Okay guys, so we are going to have the demonstration of uh, VPC now, okay. The only difference over here is instead of North Virginia, we are going to use the region Ohio. Right, that's the only difference into this particular architecture. So this is the architecture that we are going to build. We are going to create a VPC with this particular side of right and after that we are going to create two subnets inside of it. One would be the public subnet. How we can know that it is a public subnet? We can assign one route, right? That route would be going uh, into the route table of public subnet, which says that if the internet traffic is there, go to IGW. That is internet gateway. So we'll be also creating the internet gateway over here, right? And then we would be having the private subnet. And into this private subnet, we would be just allowing the traffic to traverse locally. Okay. So what are we going to do is we are going to create a VPC with slash 24 net mask, right? So if we see, we have total of 20, 32 bits, right? From this 32 bits, if I am reducing 26 bits, I am left with 8 bits. So if we see 2 to the power 8, it would give me 256 addresses. So there can be 256 IP addresses into this particular VPC, right? Now, out of those VPC, I'm just dividing those 256 IP addresses into public subnet and the private subnet. So for doing so, what we have to do is we have to actually reduce. Okay, here it would be 24 instead of 26, my bad. Now I want to reduce the network size. So for that, I'm increasing the number of uh, bits given to the network. Okay, and uh, reducing the number of bits given to the host. So if I do 32 minus uh, 26, I'll be left with 6 now, right? So when we have uh, 6 over here, 6 bits, that means 2 to the power 6, that would be giving us 64 addresses. So both of these uh, subnets would be having 64 addresses each. But if you add these two, you'll be coming with the total of 128 addresses, right? But we said that into this particular VPC, we can have 256 addresses. So it means that you can also create two more subnets into this if you want. Right. Or one more subnet with uh, more number of hosts inside of it. Right. So that can be done over here. Then this public subnet would be assigned to this particular root table. And the private subnet would be assigned to this particular root table. And we'll be creating the internet gateway as I already told. So let's do this on the console already. So here on the console, I am on my VPC. You simply need to click on this create VPC button. I just want to create the VPC as of now. If you want, you can create VPC and move. It means that you can create VPC and subnets in the one go. But right now I'll just create the VPC. Let's call it as my VPC, right? It would be following IPv4 cider and I'm manually entering that, which would be 10.0.0.0 slash 24. I do not want any IPv6 to be used over here, right? In tenancy, we have two options, default and dedicated. Uh, but if you use default, then you know how your host or the EC2 instances would be launched inside of this uh, VPC would be selected when you actually launch the instance. Okay, that are you having the dedicated instances? Are you going to go with the dedicated host? What are these things? We will be understanding them in module number four. 
If you go with the dedicated tenancy, it means that you are launching the instances. If you are launching the instances inside of this VPC, they would be going to your dedicated hardware in the backend. Okay, so right now we'll just keep it as default. Tag is already added for the name. If you want to add any new tags, you can. And I'll just simply create the VPC. So the VPC is created. Now I want to create the subnet. So I'll be going here in the subnets and what I'll do is I'll be just creating the subnet. So in which VPC I want to select create the subnets into my VPC. Okay, so this is my first subnet. I'll be naming it as public SN. Availability zone, you can decide that into which availability zone you want the subnet to reside or you can let Amazon choose it for you. Right, it is recommended that Amazon chooses for you, but if you want, you can choose it uh, by yourself as well. So let's say I'll be just putting this into US East 2A and the side of us would be 10.0.0.0 slash 26. Okay, this would be the side of. Now I'll be adding a new subnet over here and this subnet would be the private subnet. The availability zone would be 2B over here and slash 26 okay this is how your subnets would be created I've, cre I've created two subnets we'll just simply click on okay here it will be 64 sorry my bad it would be 10.0.0.64 slash 26 right and we'll be clicking on create subnet so both the subnets are created as you can see these subnets are having route table associated with it okay and this root table would be actually uh, both of them are the same root table as you can see right so if i just go to this particular root table and if i go check the roots between like what are the roots given to this root table then you can see that we just have allowance of uh, traversing the traffic locally right so that is good for my private subnet but for my public subnet i cannot accept this right so what I'll do is I'll change the name of this root table. I'll be just naming it as private RT. I'll save it. Okay. And I'll associate this with my private uh, subnet. So here I'll just click on edit subnet association and private subnet would be associated with this particular root table. Okay. Once it is done, I'll be creating a new root table. And this root table would be, let's say, public RT. I'll be selecting the VPC, that is my VPC. And I'll be creating the root table. So this root table is uh, created. And uh, we have, again, you know, by default, the route that would be added into this root table is only the local traversal, right? So we have to add, I want to edit the route over here. And I want to add a route that if the traffic is destined for internet okay then we have to traverse it to the internet gateway but the problem is we haven't created any internet gateway yet right so i'll just cancel this as of now we'll go to the internet gateway from the left hand pane over here and simply we have to create the internet gateway okay i'll just name it as my igw and that's it create internet gateway so we have just created this. It is not attached. So you can see the state is detached right now. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll go to actions, attach to VPC. And I'll be selecting the VPC over here and attach. So our internet gateway is attached to our VPC now. Fine. The next thing that we'll do is we'll go back to the root table. Into the root table, we'll be selecting this public RT. And I'll be changing the routes. I'll edit the routes over here and add a route, internet traffic and it would be going to internet gateway and my IDW is the internet gateway that we created. So we'll select that and we'll save the changes. Once the changes are done, we will go to the subnet association. I'll edit the subnet association over here and I'll attach or I'll associate public subnet with this particular route table. So that's it guys, now we have VPC, we have subnets, we have root tables and we have internet gateway, right? So we have successfully created our architecture which was depicted on the whiteboard.
and uh, next we would be you know creating the instances and the security groups and the NACLs. that we would be creating in our module number four so that's it for this demonstration thank you so this was all for this particular module we have just to reiterate understood about the ip addressing we have understood about pc and the components of it right so what have we discussed we have discussed about ip addressing into which we have two types of ip addresses that we have discussed we have discussed about the class full and ciders that is classless into domain routing correct then after we have discussed about vpc the components of the vpc as well this is nothing but a virtual private cloud inside of which we discussed about subnets we discussed about route tables we have discussed about internet gateway we discussed about nat gateway and along with that we have also discussed about some security measures which can be provided to us using the nat security group more about this coming into the next module, right? So this is all for this particular module, guys. Thank you very much.